Thank you so much for the introductions and uh, thank you so much for the dignitaries on the dais for finding time today to be part of this session. And uh, definitely uh, people will have the opportunity to read the report in their own time. So I'll spend less time giving details about report and create more uh, time frame for our dignitaries to come and share their views on us. They are very critical policy makers for the country and their thought process is going to define uh, the thought process of the country. So very quickly, we'll go through some of the portions of report and, and post that, uh, we look forward to speak, uh, listen to the dignitaries present here. So very quick sequence, but something before even we reach uh, what are the findings, uh, I definitely want to attach the concept of risk in overall concept of doing business. Quite often, these two aspects are seen independent of each other, which is, which is not going to help either risk management or the business management. So when we are looking at a huge uh, potential economic growth, we're already being uh, pitched at that we should be growing even faster than China. To do all that, we need strong investment to come into country. That's one of the key parameters which define how a country has availability of funds and how exactly the distribution of funds will grow, whether certain segments of economy, certain industries, and all other features. Anybody who will come with investment has got two parameters in their mind. One, how safe is my investment? Am I going to lose all of it? I'm sure even when you do at your, uh, at your own personal investments, you don't want to lose money. And secondly, how much better returns you can make. So safety comes first and returns come later. So risk in both the situations play a parameter because if the risks are managed well, the safety of your investment goes higher. And if risks are managed well, the cost of doing business is also reduced. So as a country, if we are looking at a huge investment coming in, we need to ensure we identify the risk and provide a better mitigation to them. So when we are doing these exercises, so these risks are being identified not to identify, but to mitigate. That's, that's the end objective, so that we have been able to find out what the risks are and accordingly address them. And, and I must uh, compliment and accolade uh, all of you and everybody else who has given contribution in terms of uh, providing inputs for the survey because uh, when we conduct uh, this survey, all the professionals, policymakers, leaders provide their uh, views on what are the top risks. And it has been so well matching with the exact scenario of the country that I must say that at least uh, from risk perspective, we can say the risk managers uh, are, are very well aware of what's happening and, and at least the risk management framework is, is in very good hands. Last year, we remember we had uh, uh, corruption and bribery coming to top, and we had a huge uh, upscale on the political stability. The reasons were obvious. We could read in the newspaper what was going on. So similarly, we had terrorism, a big risk, maybe four years back when there were a lot of incidents, but it kept falling down the ratings. So it has exactly been what's happening, how the, how the business has been viewing it, and thankfully, good inputs uh, have most probably made even this year's report uh, uh, very much relevant and very much in tune to what we have seen in earlier years. So if you look at uh, the survey results, here are briefly uh, uh, all the risks uh, displayed on your screen. So this year again, uh, the corruption, bribery, and corporate fraud uh, happens to be rated as number one risk. I'll repeat, this is really rated by you all, by industry, by policymakers, including uh, government employees and people at, at good holding positions when they decide what is the risk. So that has again uh, found number one place. The second risk is information and cyber insecurity. It can be directly linked with uh, the number of incidents which have come up. And at the same time, I will say it is also directly linked with certain risk sliding down the perimeter. So if you look at uh, political and governance instability, which stands at number 11 now, was at number three last year because we found that earlier government was not able to get relevant policies out in time and there was definitely a political instability or, or the policies certainty were missing. So that risk moment, uh, we had a clear cut uh, majority run government coming into the Lok Sabha, that risk has automatically shifted gears and, and gone to a much lower side. 
terrorism and insurgency, uh, a critical point here when ter terrorism and insurgency has come up, uh, well, always we have in our minds associated terrorism and insurgency with the state of Jammu and Kashmir and the northeastern states. But right now, the surge of terrorism and insurgency going up is, is heavily, heavily because of the naxalism becoming stronger and stronger every day in this country. And somehow the uh, technique, methodology to address them has not yielded enough results. So number of incidents, number of fatalities, which have uh, gone up in the state which are infested by naxalism is, is actually pushing this risk up. And let's remember, for a very long time, those states, since they were not having any huge economic growth and mostly were poverty ridden, were not seen as major contributors to the country's economic growth. But realize all the resources are coming from there. The coal is coming from there. A lot of export of uh, iron ore happens from there. Most of the resources which are required for economic growth, whether to be used inside country to develop steel and others, or even exporting. Non-availability of coal can crumble the power generation infrastructure in this country because we are still very, very heavily coal reliant. So those states having increase of nexalism are directly impacting the terrorism risk going up and although, uh, at this time reaching the third, third risk. Business espionage, very relevant, has been seeing uptrend. Crime, crime covers uh, heinous crime as well as, as some petty thefts and others. The numbers have uh, gone up a little bit. Strike closures and unrest. This is, this is uh, uh, quite an interesting drop from where it used to be. And uh, if I have to link it, why the strike closure and unrest were very high last year and not now, uh, I, I may take the liberty of saying that the labor unions and the political parties have always had been certain understanding. There are enough political parties which run labor unions. Because of the election time, there was a lot of support from political parties to labor unions, whether for demand for new salaries, new pay structures, or even a lot of strikes, and a lot of time these strikes going violent. So that was a major risk which, which went up, and now maybe uh, that election era has gone away, so this, this has uh, gradually come down towards more acceptable levels. So uh, very quickly going to some of the regions, let's say what is North India most worried about or the other regions most worried about. North India is heavily looking at corruption, bribery, corporate fraud still as number one risk. Whereas South, which is, emerging, which is emerging as a major manufacturing hub, has rated the strikes, closure, and unrest as, as the number one risk. East, maybe uh, you can say because of the northeastern states and some portion of the Nexel infested states coming into that has rated terrorism and insurgency as their main risk. And West, heavy, heavy commercial world, financial world sitting there, corruption, bribery, and corporate frauds. Uh, something interesting, most of the people, moment they heard, uh, moment they hear corruption, immediately they start looking towards government. But that's not maybe the only scenario which has pushed this risk up. Uh, you'll be quite surprised that in last three to four years, few lakh crore non-performing assets have been written off by Indian banks. And business not doing well is not the only reason. In fact, the intention of those entrepreneurs to do fraud or siphon of funds has been the major reasons of those huge number of non-performing assets coming up. Those lack of crores, forget about how much money banks can make, it can change the GDP and the overall economic face of this country if those corporate frauds could have been avoided. So that's again a one, major, one major factor which is impacting the overall uh, uh, corruption, bribery, and corporate fraud index. These are various uh, industries and segments. I'm, I'm sure you will understand the IT will say information security being the top risk for me. Government have still rated in, uh, terrorism and insurgency, maybe because the first target of terrorism is government and government units. So obviously they, they attach uh, the crime, uh, uh, terrorism directly to them. I definitely want to just spend a couple of minutes on this slide because this is how the outside India professionals or the investors view us. So this is all the people from outside India who pr provided the inputs in the survey. So here you'll find workplace violence and sexual harassment going up. It can be because of huge impact of the media and also almost uh, civic unrest being caused once we saw there was 
uh, very heinous crimes against uh, females, that is one. Secondly, they also view the issues of strikes going to violent as workplace violence. So that's again one more feature which has pushed it up. Business espionage, I will say we need to uh, equip our law enforcement agencies as well as judiciary to understand this a little better than where we are as of now because this is a very strategic risk for investors. If they come with their business information to India and they believe it can be just picked up and used by any other entity, there can be issues. One of the major reasons of a lot of investors not going to China now because they believe the intellectual property once going to China has the propensity to travel across all roads and reach all corners. So maybe we need to protect ourselves well in time rather than having a notorious image which China has achieved already. Uh, this is a quick trend on what was happening earlier and what it looks like right now. Uh, I already made some comments during, uh, while discussing the rest, so we'll not spend much time on it. Like I said, we have a we have, uh, lot of support for the overall report and the survey that we did. My sincere thanks to Fiki, first of all, for having leadership to organize such uh, knowledge events and taking lead to say that, yes, yeah, this is a concern from industry and we must take it to, uh, including industry and back to government. A lot of organizations, corporate, and each individual who has uh, either provided inputs or has written the report, uh, thanks to all of you. Uh, 